All right, guys, lots happening in additive manufacturing this week, from more acquisitions and IPOs to new metal materials for fused filament fabrication, fully 3D printed car kits, and Tesla 3D printing solid state batteries. Right here on Vision Miner 3D Printing News. Let's get into it. Okay, so first we've got an acquisition. 3D Hubs has been purchased by Proto Labs for $320 million. That's right, Proto Labs straight up bought out 3D Hubs. Now, they've been acquired for $280 million with a possible $50 million to follow later. The $280 million is made up of $130 million in cash and $150 million in stock. The Dutch 3D printing service owners get a nice little exit bonus and they will continue to work as a separate brand underneath Protolabs. According to the Protolabs CEO Rob Bodor, the addition of 3D hubs provides Protolabs a platform to evolve our service model to provide unprecedented manufacturing flexibility to our customers. Protolabs also states that 3D hubs has made over 6 million parts and their 2020 revenue is estimated to be around $25 million, with a compound annual growth rate of over 200% since 2017. Next, we've got massive it going public on the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange with their IPO at a $200 million valuation. The Israeli large format 3D printing firm is set to go public on the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange. Market sources believe that massive it 3D aims to raise $50 million in funding in a deal valuing the company at $200 million. Founded in 2013 and based in the Israeli city of Lod, Masavet 3D manufactures and markets large format 3D printers in addition to an accompanying array of materials and software. The company's product range is essentially designed to enable clients in the engineering and architectural markets to create scale models and parts quickly and cost effectively. The firm has raised around 20 to 30 million dollars in previous funding rounds with investors including companies such as Stratasys. By the way, if you like this video or investor news in general, hit that like and subscribe button. We post content every week and that little button press lets YouTube know that you enjoy our content. And if there's something else you want us to cover, definitely leave a, a comment below. Moving right along, we've got why companies should reshore prototyping and other manufacturing operations. The call to bring manufacturing back home has become increasingly audible during the past four years. Even before the onset of the COVID-19 crisis in 2020, reshoring was becoming a more attractive option to U.S. manufacturers because of the trade war with China, the tax incentives, duties, tariffs, I mean 30% on anything coming from China right now. And uh, frankly, our lack in transparency in supply chains. Many of the reasons why offshoring began in the first place are no longer applicable to manufacturing in the 21st century. Major companies like GE and Apple have been among those leading the charge to bring their tooling production, component manufacturing, and assembly closer to home by reshoring and nearshoring these operations. The Empire Group has been paying attention to all of these issues, and a recent white paper they published called Reshoring Prototyping and Production offers a practical guide to mitigating the risk and avoiding disruptions. Among the key subtopics the paper discusses uh, are the traditional supply chain, prices and pandemic, supply chain diversification and local manufacturing, and where and when to source local. Check out the white paper in the link below, definitely worth a read. Next, we've got making your own 3D printed cameras. It's Dora Goodman's open source 3D printed cameras project. Now, Dora Goodman is a Budapest-based company specializing in open source 3D printed cameras. Goodman started redesigning cameras using wood as a hobby, and a few years later, having found her vocation, Goodman actually quit her job and pursued her dream full time. The idea behind the company is to create a personal, accessible solution for analog photography as an alternative to generic and mass-produced products available from other manufacturers like Canon. This is very cool to see, and you can find out a lot more about that project on the website in the link below. Next, we've got Nano launching Zetamix H13 filament. Now, the Zetamix line already includes zirconia, alumina, and stainless steel filaments. It is compatible with most standard extrusion 3D printers, but H13 is a new breed. H13 is a high temperature resistant steel. It can resist to extreme temperatures without losing its high strength. The steel alloy is commonly used for hot and cold work tooling applications, enabling production of a wide variety of tools such as extrusion dies or injection molds. Moreover, this material has a high level of ductility, thermal and electrical 
conductivity and resistance to corrosion. It's intended for use by SMEs, international groups, as well as laboratories and research centers. The best part though, H13 ZMX filament is compatible with any FFF or FDM 3D printer and only requires a one-step thermopost process in a tubular furnace to achieve a density of more than 90%. Now that's much easier than all the other types, most of the other types that require debinding processes before the actual sintering happens. Very, very cool stuff. I want to play with some of that, but before I do, we're going to talk about Blackstone developing a 3D printed solid state battery with an eye on Tesla. The Swiss firm Blackstone Resources has achieved a series of important milestones for its proprietary 3D printing technology to print lithium ion solid state batteries. Blackstone's process offers major advantages over conventional battery cell designs using liquid electrolytes. For example, obviously at lower costs, higher levels of production flexibility when it comes to the format or of the cell, uh, and a 20% increase in energy density. Also, by using this technology, the number of materials that do not store energy, like copper and aluminum, could be reduced by up to 10%. Elon Musk himself has acknowledged the importance of both having access to the next generation of battery technology and the raw materials needed to produce those batteries. Musk expects that the next generation of batteries will use significantly fewer battery metals, such as cobalt, but more nickel and lithium. This could be a game changer for the development of solid state batteries. An automated 3D printing production process could save up to 70% over traditional methods. Very cool stuff coming from Tesla. Next, we've got your own 3D printable kit car. So 1016 Industries is about to debut its first aftermarket full body 3D printed car kit here in 2021. The company plans to provide directly printed tooling molds for the McLaren 720S and other supercars as well in the near future with the goal to manufacture products directly as 3D printed parts. As part of 1016 Industries' quest to be the first in the automotive industry to seamlessly integrate 3D printed technologies into scaled manufacturing processes, last December the company successfully printed the first phase of performance testing for its McLaren 720S and 3D printed parts. Initially conceived as an exploration into how to make an array of world-class automotive parts more efficiently, the 1016 Industries 3D McLaren 720S prototype is an exercise in fully utilizing the state-of-the-art 3D printing to understand the limits of what the technology can achieve. According to Peter Northrup, the CEO, we were encouraged by how the 720S prototype performed. While the material hasn't proven yet that it would be the right fit for a long-term prototype, our testing has proven that a car can use 3D printed technologies and be drivable. As to what extent, that is what 1016 Industries is working to find out now. Meanwhile, we've got middle schoolers making components for the International Space Station. <laughs> Sounds so great when you put it like that. Uh, anyway, students from Dade County Middle School in Trenton, Georgia have used their school's FDM 3D printer to produce flight-ready components for the International Space Station. NASA's hunch, or high school students united with NASA to create hardware <laughs> program, seeks to empower STEM students through project-based learning activities, exposing them to modern manufacturing technologies like 3D printing. This is actually how we got the first few members of our team here at Vision Miner. STEM programs, local STEM programs. They knew how to 3D print, they wanted a job, they wanted to do something, it worked out great. Now these particular ISS components were printed using high performance Ultim filament, a material characterized by its high strength, flame resistance, excellent dielectric stability, and other features. We actually specialize in this material in open material systems, and our website is full of resources, tools, and accessories to make it easier for you to do at home. The school has stated that it will also be printing upcoming parts using carbon fiber reinforced composites. We've got a ton of that on our shop too. Anyway, the question of the week this week is, are you attending any live events this year, specifically for additive and 3D printing? Maybe you're going to AMUG in Florida this month, May, perhaps an ERF or MRF festival later this year. I know Rapid's going on. We'll see if it actually happens. Uh, what, what else have you heard that's coming back? And are there any virtual events that you're interested in going to and checking out? Definitely let us know in the comments below. Here at Vision Miner, we specialize in functional 3D printing like P3 
peak and ultim and pps do high performance thermoplastics and if you're interested in using that stuff in your business feel free to reach out and we can help you make the right choice for your application shoot us an email give us a call we're here to help anyway thanks for watching have a positive rest of your day and we'll see you on the next video